walking through Belfast in Northern Ireland, he was stopped by the police. And she asked him, are you a Catholic or a Protestant? To which the man replied, I'm a Muslim. The policeman then asked, are you a Catholic, Muslim, or Protestant? <laughs> <laughs> The book joke um, serves to uh, illustrate traditional um, division in Northern Ireland between Catholics and Protestants. The society has been so pedantically focused on the two primo uh, separate primordial artic articulations of identity that it was difficult, until recent years, to think outside of this dual paradigm. For so long, the two communities lived separately and antagonistically and thousands are being killed in a civil war that spans decades. A peace agreement was signed in 1998, which has led to relative peace in the region, so I problematized that a little in my, in my article. Um, but this more benign environment is pregnant with potential for lasting peace. The reconciliation has also led to increased migrant, uh, migration in the region, which now hosts more than 20,000 people from minority ethnic backgrounds, uh, including roughly 330 people. This means that there are now more than just two identity communities in Northern Ireland. Uh, this paper focuses on an unlikely actor in the peace-building endeavour, a perfect religio-cultural society, namely the Northern Ireland Tolerance Educational and Cultural Society. A mouthful, but uh, and I check it, they thought. So this society was inspired by the Turkish Islamic scholar Sadullah Gulen. Uh, I'm interested in exploring the movement through the endeavours of this association. Uh, I draw on ethnographic work and qualitative interviews I conducted with members of the endeavour. So this uh, Niteka was initiated in 2004 by a number of Turkish academics and business people living and working in Northern Ireland, several of whom had uh, experience of working with UN inspired associations in different countries. As the group grew, they recruited several university graduate students from Turkey and Central Asia in Italy, who were committed to their ideals. Amongst NITECA's principal goals are to help integrate Turkish people living in Northern Ireland into the host society. This does not mean assimilating, but promoting their own, their own culture whilst learning from the host country's culture. They organize a wide range of activities aimed at promoting tolerance and respect for different communities, as well as demonstrating aspects of their own culture. Their pursuits include a strong focus on interfaith and intercultural dialogue, which we've heard a lot about today. And the work undertaken by members of NITEC is voluntary, and I ask members of the association, what motivates them to give up their time to engage in, in these various social endeavours? One member said, uh, quote, I think it is a responsibility, it is not a hobby. If I don't do it, I will be irresponsible according to my religion. It is one of the major requirements of my religion. You can't sit down in your house all the time. If Islam is good, you must live it. We must be proactive, especially in this part of the world where dialogue is needed. This, is, um, this opinion is widespread in Antigua. Members believe it is their responsibility as good Muslims to carry out good works. They insist that though prayer, pilgrimage, and asceticism are core components of Islam, so is engaging in social endeavors to make the, war, the world a more peaceful place. They do this through the promotion of dialogical activities. Uh, this echoes Gulen's action oriented, oriented Islam, which is grounded in social engagement with other faiths and cultural groups. Gulen describes organizations like NITECA that promote interfaith dialogue as peace islands. These peace islands, he argues, <coughs> promote understanding and tolerance and must be designed to encourage universal human virtues and draw together those of different beliefs and orientations in a mutually respected milieu. I now illustrate the manifestation uh, of some of these principles by describing uh, some, project, some projects initiated by NITECA. Um, 
according to Cecilia Belen, uh, open quote, interfaith dialogue is a must today and the first step in establishing it <coughs> is forgetting the past, ignoring polemical arguments and giving precedence to common points, which far outnumber polemical ones. End quote. In an era when Huntington mediatized thesis arguing for the inevitable crash of civilization is gaining strength, Bulen insists that dialogue should replace this potential crash. This can only be accomplished, he argues, by sidestepping the most antagonistic and appar apparently irreconcilable differences, and instead focusing on the similarities amongst groups, which he insists <coughs> are of great significance. <coughs> this attitude spreads all the activities of Manchester. Following the lead of Cecilia Gulen and the Writers and Journalists Foundation, they have organized Ramadan dinners where they invite different faith groups uh, to share a meal together, hosted by Manchester. And I second member notes that though it is common for Muslims to share food with others during Ramadan, inviting different faith groups to the dinner is a new idea and started in Turkey in the 1990s. This dinner has taken place for the last two consecutive years, and members claim it was a great starting point to get to know different groups in the area. They acknowledge that some Muslims believe that Ramadan is only about sharing with other Muslims, but insist that those people misinterpret the spirit of the festival. They further ma maintain that the Quran specifically calls people of the book to come together. Inspired by these principles, these dinners play host to Catholics, Protestants, Jewish, and different Muslim groups all seated around the same table. One senior member of Menteca pays tribute to the work of Bulen and his close associates uh, for their work. However, he recognizes that Menteca cannot accomplish such massive feats as meeting the Pope and head rabbi, as Cecilia Bulen has done in the past. He does, however, point out the importance of dialogue, not only between faith leaders, uh, but also between the participants of faith, by which he means non clerics lay people. Without this commitment to the ordinary man and woman, he argues that dialogue between the faith leaders will come to nothing. This is very much is very much a bottom-up approach, which is engages at the community level. He mentions that he has organised a table tennis competition uh, between different faith groups and insists that this form of dialogue is every bit as important as any conference. I now talk a little bit about conference. So the insistency on the ubiquity of commonality between the Abrahamic religions is one of the keys to Cecilia Bland's thought. He argues that one must believe in all of the prophets of the Abrahamic religions in order to be a true Muslim. Though there are clearly, uh, though there are clearly differences between the beliefs and the different personality of the prophets, Bulen encourages Muslims to embrace all religions but pay as much attention to the Abrahamic religions as they have most in common. In an effort to bring peace, uh, Gulen encourages his, follow his followers to embrace the similarities and ignore the differences between the different faith groups. The most explicit promotion of interfaith dialogue by Manteca comes in the form of the Interfaith Symposium they are organized. In 2006, they held a conference focusing on the miracles in the Abrahamic religions, inviting speakers from the Jewish uh, and Christian community living in Northern Ireland. In 2007, they organized a symposium named the Fundamental Critique, where there were speakers from uh, the three faiths again, who talked about the universal principles of trustfulness and trustworthiness. There was also a, a professional storyteller from the Baha'i community. These conferences attracted up to 100 attendees from a variety of religious backgrounds, including Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, Sunni, and Shia Muslim. One member of Mentech explained the reasoning behind these conferences. Open quote. It is important to share and discuss the common values. We believe in the Abrahamic religions. At the basic principle, all <coughs> religions are the same. As a Christian, you cannot tell me that being a thief is good behavior. No, you cannot say this. The Muslim people believe that all of the Abrahamic religions are from the same light. The origin is the same. When we are organizing these conferences, the aim is not to compare the religions and is not to talk about the differences. If you were a book 
Christian you are happier than I am happy. You should be a good Christian and I should be a good Muslim. But while I am being a good Muslim, I should be aware of you and learn about your position. The aim is not to convert or to make you Muslim or Christian. End quote. Again, this echoes the political end quote with the insistence on a certain compatibility of the Dick and Abraham's religion. This volunteer argues that focusing on the differences will lead to more conflict. One must, he argues, learn and appreciate each other's cultures and traditions in order to live in harmony. Members of my sect acknowledge that they did not invent these themes, but they just replicate the annual conferences going on in Turkey. Indeed, the same conferences with the same theme are replicated in many different countries around the world, inspired by organizations belonging to the Dick and Abraham community. The ideological approach of this Gulen Inspired Association sounds quite simplistic, especially in the context of Northern Ireland's violent past. Indeed, it is a straightforward approach, and in the current climate whereby the guns have largely stopped firing <coughs> in Northern Ireland, this simple approach appears to be having some impact, although modest. The sight of Catholic, Protestant, Jews, and Muslims sitting around the same table in a community photographs are deeper. The examples of my tech of activities discussed, uh, discussed rather, illustrate this declared commitment to tolerance and dialogue. They are, diff uh, they are different to, to the traditional organizations working for dialogue and peace um, in Northern Ireland in many different ways. They are obviously non-indigenous, whilst the vast majority of groups engaged in dialogical practice in Northern Ireland are natives. Uh, to the, the most important difference, however, is the difference in outlook. Indigenous groups in Northern Ireland act locally and think locally. They work at a grassroots level to try and bring peace to the region. Their thoughts are on peace in their local area, and they are unlikely to envision their modest work as having a global impact. My tech, on the other hand, engages in an explicit form of a sociologist referred to as localization. This concept has its origins in the marketing culture, whereby global corporations adapt their product and managerial practices to local traditions and tastes. Roland Robertson uh, generalizes this concept to refer to the interpenetration of the global and the local in any given context. In a very practical way, members of my tech act globally and think globally, always positioned delicately and concurrently in the two contexts <coughs> without ceasing doing. By thinking globally in their capacity as my tech volunteers, they always pay heed to the messages and principles of the Tula Gulen and are loosely collected, uh, connected to other Gulen inspired groups around the world in a global circle. They largely work in unison with the same aims and objectives, but adapt their dialogical methods to local situations. As shown, uh, as shown previously, my tech are keen to work with anybody who is willing to engage with them. This has included faith members of all the Abraham's religions, including Catholics and Protestants. They have also adopted the conscious strategy of inviting local academics and clerics to speak at their conferences, whilst at times electing to draw from their international reservoir of sister organizations to bring in spokesmen to represent the Muslim opinion on various issues. Their emphasis on localism largely extends to funding also. My tech members insist that they get most of their funding from local Turkish business people and other funding from uh, the city council. So they also have collection boxes in local shops. They maintain that finances are regularly tight, but they do not let these obstacles deter them. Members acknowledge that they get some financial assistance um, from business people in Turkey who help uh, subsidize a yearly trip to the organized Turkey for indigenous people of Ireland. Uh, this trip, they argue, is a continuation of their promotion of intercultural dialogue. Uh, this is, in, in this sense, they go global. Um, it also serves to promote Turkish culture in Northern Ireland. Given the difficult history of uh, ethnic and religious intolerance in Northern Ireland, and the current nervous post the agreement environment, uh, one may question whether another ethnic and faith group in Northern Ireland
uh, to exacerbate tensions rather than acting as a potential uh, antidote. In response, it is clear that we now live in a globalized world, and one corollary of this is an increase in migration, and furthermore, an unprecedented mixture of cultures and religions. As aforementioned, there has been a dramatic increase in migration to Northern Ireland in recent years. The Turkish community are amongst these uh, migrants. They do not claim to represent all Muslims in the region, but do espouse views of tolerance and offer contributions to the whole society based on their system of beliefs, which avowedly has service and humanity at its core. By hosting various functions and inviting different ethnic and faith groups, including Catholics and Protestants, Nanteca has acted as a conduit uh, by setting up a platform which may be interpreted with suspicion if it was initiated by the either uh, of the aforementioned Christian groups. Uh, in this sense, the neutrality of Islam vis-a-vis -vis the different Christian groups may serve as the strongest asset to the promotion of their dialogue platform. Furthermore, it has been well documented that some migrants isolate themselves in the host country. This is often exacerbated by restrictive and assimilationist tendencies of the host government. And Teke have shown that they are willing and indeed actively engaged in integrating into the mainstream in Northern Ireland, combat, um, combating potential problems of isolation and disorder. In conclusion, as the title of the conference indicates, the Muslim world is in transition. It now has to deal with extremists within the UNA, as well as with the portrayal of Islam as an inherently radical and its members as an undifferentiated group by the majority of opinion makers in the West. With the hyperbolic claims of the inevit inevitability of the fact of civilization permeating the general consciousness, there is a need for a counter discourse from both Muslims and non Muslims alike. The political end and the movement that has surrounded him have distortively and practically contributed to the peaceful participation in civil society. I hope that this paper has illustrated this point. There's a need for a more balanced investigation of the variety of expressions of Islam and the need for academics to focus more on the peace rules movement and movements promoting its moderation. I hope I've contributed to this endeavor by focusing on the dialogue to relations practice of the Gulen movement at a very micro level.